Hello, how's it going? So today, I wanted to talk about the uh, Novation circuit and how I've been using it and it's kind of a, a hub for a hybrid setup I've got going on at the moment. So with um, the holiday season, uh, during Black Friday there, I picked up the Arturia V Collection uh, Virtual Synths to use on my laptop and my main computer. And I really like Virtual Synths. I also like hardware stuff as, like as this, but the one thing I find frustrating with Virtual Synths is I do like to do sound design and I hate doing sound design on the computer. Uh, I like having physical hardware, you know, with knobs and things I can touch and, and play around with to make sounds. I don't like dragging the mouse around everywhere to uh, play around with uh, the settings on the virtual synth. So I was looking for some sort of hardware that I could coordinate with, you know, a MIDI controller of some sort to coordinate with those virtual synths to be able to control them better. And I was actually looking at potentially selling this. This is the original uh, Novation circuit to try to find some sort of hardware out there that would work better than this. And just before doing so, I threw on uh, Google, you know, hey, uh, Novation circuit is a MIDI controller. I think a low pop or whatever uh, did a pretty uh, kick ass video where he shows how to use this against one virtual synth and get, you know, uh, use these knobs across all the, the, the tracks in here to, to control it. Now, I thought that was cool, but it wasn't exactly what I wanted to do in my setup. I want to take advantage of the circuit's onboard sequencing capabilities as well as its MIDI control capabilities to, to be able to compose using the circuit, but instead of using the onboard sounds, uh, samples, and the onboard synth engine, I uh, used the virtual uh, the VSTs from Arturia. So that is what I'm going to try to do here, and that's what I'm going to uh, show you in this video. So hopefully you find it of value. All right, here we go. Okay, here we go. Sitting down at the table here. Let's get going. All right, so the first thing I want to show you is if you're having trouble getting your uh, circuit to line up like I'm doing in this video, check your uh, preferences in Reaper here or whatever you're using and make just just make sure it's enabled. Um, that's one gotcha that, that will get you quick if you're going in here. So I'm just enabling the uh, track for recording and then I'm setting the source uh, to be uh, all, ch all MIDI channels coming in from uh, the Novation circuit. And let's go ahead and add in uh, one of the Arturia VSTs here. We'll bring in the uh, Profit. And you can see we get uh, we can just play it in that with the uh, circuit as we'd like. Just using the circuit as a basic uh, Which is fun and you can easily switch between the, the presets here. So very basic stuff, nothing too fancy yet. Let's go into the settings of the uh, Profit here and you can see right here you can choose, so you, not only in Reaper you can choose what uh, MIDI channels of the, uh, the circuit come through, but you can also control it within the VST itself. So you can see when I switched to the 2 there, it didn't work with a synth 1 track, or here I'm in synth 2 track, and it won't work till I actually tell it, hey, listen to channel 2. Now if I set the uh, MIDI channel to all, it will pick up um, all the uh, synth 1, synth 2, and the, the drum tracks on the circuit. And I'm just going to put the drum into note mode here, so I can see you get with the drum track, you only get four different notes you can actually play if you finger drum. If you actually use the sequencer, you only get one note. So really, it's not too useful. 
But let's go ahead and what I want to show you, and this is uh, how you can actually map the knobs on the top of the Novation circuit to uh, the knobs in the VST. So you just set to learn mode there and you click on the knob you want uh, on the VST to be uh, synced up to the knob on the circuit. Twist the knob on the circuit there and then you can quickly go through all these knobs and, and set them up um, to whatever you want them to control on the, the VST. So this is really in uh, low pops video he shows you how to do this and he goes through you know tracks one uh, two uh, pardon me synth one to the drum tracks the FX tracks and you can see uh, how when I'm going into the different tracks here keep it keep a close eye on the channel column there because you can see so synth one you can see is uh, you know putting messages to channel one synth two is uh, putting messages to channel two and synth three, uh, the drums to channel three, and then the FX and uh, the mixer will be pushing to channel 16. So you can see um, if I'm going to be using three different VSTs here across three different MIDI channels, that's not going to work. I'm going to have to keep uh, things under their own channel. So that's what I'm doing now as I'm going back to Reaper. I'm setting track one to only send circuit messages from MIDI channel one and I went into the VST before that and made sure it's listening on channel one. So for this video we will be using uh, just one channel, one MIDI channel per synth. So we'll go ahead and uh, slot in the rest of our uh, knobs to the circuit here so you can see continuing to just click on one of them on the VST and then twisting the knob quickly on the circuit to get them in sync. And this is the learn mode under the the MIDI settings in the VST. So this should give me control over oscillator A and B somewhat. Uh, the mixer for mixing in how much oscillator A and B I want into the patch. And then I've uh, given myself the ability to play around with a uh, cutoff filter. So let's just play a sequence here on here quickly. I had something saved in here. It doesn't sound to be that great, but you can see I can quickly change the tempo or whatnot. So everything is being driven musically or coordinated from the uh, circuit. I don't have anything in the Reaper or, or the DAW that's uh, telling it what to play. But the circuit is sending the note messages through its sequencer. And now I have the circuit uh, knobs that I can use to control uh, the VST directly, which is kind of cool. So if I had some sort of uh, MIDI device that had, a, you know, 20 different dials and a whole bunch of different buttons and switches. I could, you know, you could technically uh, make a copy of the uh, of the uh, profit kind of. I think if there's a company that actually does that right now, you can buy. It's not an actual profit, but it looks exactly like uh, kind of how the board there does work. So you can have a one-to-one -one replica of something hardware to control in the VST, which would be nice. But they are not cheap. So in this case, I am uh, making do what I what I can do with the circuit for now. All right, let's go ahead and add in uh, another VST here. So same thing, gonna set it to, now that's just a force of habit because whenever I'm putting hardware since I do that, but we wanna go to add in MIDI channel two, which we just did there. And we'll go ahead and add a VST. In this case, we'll grab the DX7 uh, VST from our art Arturia here. We'll empty out the default configuration and we will uh, set it to learn and we'll get that whole hooked in. I won't make you watch the whole thing, but it's the exact same setup as done before. You'll notice I make a mistake here. I don't switch to synth 2. It's not working because I'm still in synth 1, which is sending on MIDI channel 1. But as soon as I switch it to synth 2, uh, it's it's coming through. So we'll, I've got it all set up now. I skipped ahead there for you. And uh, yeah, so I've, I've used uh, the eight knobs on the circuit here to configure what I wanted to on the interface and let's go ahead and play around with it.
All right, we're getting something here, so we'll go ahead and start to record it into the sequencer on the circuit to try to set up some sort of fun loop, which is done now. We got that. So let's go ahead and add in some drums now. What I'm going to use for drums is once, of course, I'm going to set this up to uh, no, not stereo. There's my bad habits of already putting in hardware since we're going to go input to MIDI circuit channel three because that's what we're going to control our, our drums on here. And we'll add in a, a VST here. In this case, we're going to use the CMI V from Arturia. And let me just resize the window here so it fits a bit better. There you go. You can see more of what I'm doing here. And really, all I'm just going to grab is a preset, for, uh, a drum preset on here. We'll surf through some until we can find one that works well for us. So we'll make sure the MIDI settings are okay. And just check what channel it's all. So we'll pick out the three. Uh, shouldn't matter even if I left it on all because only three is coming in from uh, Reaper. But let's just be clean. So you can see I got those. You know, I can finger drum with those, but if I want to use the sequencer, it's only going to actually use one note. So we're we're pretty limited. So maybe we'll do some sort of kick. We'll 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 surf through the presets here to find something that sounds okay, and then we'll try to sequence it in, and we'll, we'll let's jam. As I panic, <laughs> not panic, but just smash in some random notes to try to save things here. Sometimes uh, when I'm jamming like this, I just like to randomly push the, the sequencer to hopefully <laughs> let some happy accident happen. Not so much here, but once I simplified it, it seemed to sound pretty good. Awesome, so I hope you found that uh, somewhat useful. Uh, I'm gonna play around with it a bit more over the coming weeks here. Um, one thing though is if you're looking to do something like this on your own, um, the OG, the original uh, Novation circuit here, yes, I've shown you how it used, but I would actually love to upgrade this for a circuit, I believe it's the circuit tracks, because it has eight different tracks. You know, on this one you have synth one and two in the drums, which gives you control over, easily control over two virtual synths to uh, kind of sequence on here. And then the drum tracks can be used, you saw how I did in the video, very, very limit. There's a, there's a, you know, you can play four different notes on it. It's, you know, you can use it to trigger some drum sounds and a synth, but it's not too useful. I would love to see what you could do with the, the circuit tracks. It has those eight different uh, MIDI tracks on it and uh, you can go with that also I should probably try some of my electron gear too I could probably use that as well but this is just handy because I can plug it right into the laptop and take it anywhere in the house or out on the road so I'm gonna stick with that for now and we'll see how it goes and yeah if you have your own hardware that you like let me know because I'm looking maybe at replacing this still I'm not 
hard sold on this you know having eight knobs is somewhat limited you know I am uh, planning to try my hand at doing some uh, electrical engineering and maybe come up with some of my own MIDI devices this year it's one of my resolutions to try to try to up my uh, game that way and come up with some of my own hardware hopefully I don't burn the house down doing it or electrocute myself or burn my fingers with a soldering iron but we'll see how it goes anyways that's all for now and I'll catch you guys next time see you later